Hey guys, time to build something. Actually, I'm building uh, a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm modifying a wooden bandsaw into a metal bandsaw, but uh, there comes the side project. What I need for this is my Narex boring and facing head that uh, came with an SK40 taper and needs to have an uh, MK3 taper to it. So um, what did I do? I bought a, a uh, arbor that is hopefully not hardened here that can be modified to fit my mill. And I already bought um, a piece of round steel C45 that sits here in the lathe. It's uh, way too big, it needs to be 70 millimeters, but uh, that's what was available. And um, first thing we're gonna do is gonna face it off, put a bore inside here, which will be slightly smaller than the diameter of the taper, uh, of, the, of the arbor. And I will do a shrink fit, heat shrink fit to it and uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, I have I've thought thought it through um, so that I will have the maximum, hopefully the maximum precision on uh, on on all parts as you usually do it, and uh, you can just follow along. facing done. So let's do the bore. Okay, so now the OD is on 80, needs to come down to 70 later on, but for now it's good. And now, as I said, the bore. So now it's time to mill on the flats here, on, on this flange here. It might be sufficient that uh, the the down face here of the spindle will just be more or less flush with this downer uh, shoulder here. Um, so I I hope that I can just put the the disc that I'm machining against this shoulder and have just sufficient clearance here between the spindle nose and this shoulder here. At the end, it has to look something like this and um, I will be machining it off. I don't know if it is hardened. The surface seems ground so it might be hardened so I used a end mill that is supposed to be doing that. I will go gentle um, first of all taking off half a millimeter and see where we go. I think it's, it might be hard. But it's doing it. So let's use some cutting fluid and walk through. Okay, now mounted it upside down with a parallel underneath again against the, the front face here hoping it is more or less flat and I will do the other side and then see if it fits into this spindle. Well the hopes are gone it mounts fine into the into the spindle but it's just a little I don't know probably half a millimeter, I will try to measure it inside the spindle. So I need 
to think about something that I do to the disc to give that additional clearance here. I thought I could just push it against the shoulder and be good with it. But now I have to see how I do it, do it here, I have to machine it down. Okay, let's just check how much we need to add to this uh, shoulder. Yeah, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 millimeters, I would say. Yeah, so I put 0.5, so I have uh, two tenths of a millimeter still clearance. Okay, now here's the additional half millimeter distance that we need when uh, this thing is being put in there. These flats will have to be machined afterwards. I hope that with my big face mill, I have the chance to get after I have mounted the arbor in the in the plate here to get in there and clear also this half millimeter here and here. But we will see uh, for that later. OK, the bore is in. It was supposed to be 24. 0 0.10 and now it's 24 point nearly zero it's more like 09 which I decided I will leave it at that because the risk of if I do I tried spring passes they didn't work if I do really um, put a little more um, on the tool here, the risk of having it too big is is too high. So I decided to just heat it 10 to 20 degrees more before I put it on the arbor and then it will hopefully slide on and then I even have a tighter press fit. Okay, now I have um, started to mill the inner shoulder that at the end should look like this and at the moment this diameter here is above the desired one it's 35 millimeters that's the inner part i'm going for 37 here rough out generally the the profile then mill the or bore or, or drill the holes and then finally do the final dimensions once it's mounted to the arbor to make sure everything runs as concentric as possible. So some chips later, we have uh, roughed out the surface that or the shape, and I will be able to clamp now on the rotary table onto this feature here that is not perfectly cylindrical to the inner side or this side here but it's just for the four holes so they have anyway a little clearance and it will not make a huge difference on uh, on, on this you know little run out that might be here so it's over to the mill okay part looks now like this and uh, outer diameter will come off a little more, but for now it's good. So I have to drill four holes here from this side. And uh, yeah, surface finish is, is quite good here. I will also go for something like this on the other side. Hope that it turns out good. Some oil, some lighter cuts. And uh, yeah, see how that... Uh, how that works. I'm just checking if I mounted the chuck properly and um, well I would like to say it seems so. There's nothing moving at all but you can see it is touching. So this is more than sufficient because I don't, didn't know if I had the chuck off the plate or not, so 
that's good so i put the work piece on and then just center it using the arbor in the spindle drop it until it nearly fits into the hole and then i'm i'm in the middle and i just offset it by uh, um, 29 millimeters the diameter of the of the drill drill uh, circle is 56 and then uh, this operation should be done yeah this should be sufficiently precise should be in the middle and i will be lowering the table now and uh, bring it off center to drill the circle yeah here comes the limited z height of the machine in place i tried to um put a a stop mill or a, a center drill here into this actually very tiny chuck but uh, the z height was already not sufficient so I had to go for a direct uh, direct collet, which fortunately is the smallest I have with five millimeters and the center drill fits in there. So it's now drilling the holes one could not be drilled all the way through because the jaw was there it will be done by hand and I needed to put the drill in a in a collet because of the Z or Z height that was not sufficient okay, it seems the first screw fits in and even with only a five millimeter through hole it might even be sufficient for the screw to meet the thread on the other side so let's go to the plot and uh, do 5.5 millimeter enhance the through holes and also drill the one that was above the jaw also through chamfer it and then it's uh, guess I guess then it's checking if the Whole pattern is fine. I already pre-checked. It looks good, and then uh, we shrink it on. That looks promising. Seems that we got the right uh, diameter. Something happened here. I don't know, but uh, as long as it fits, it is fine. Okay, now the third uh, time I'm going to try this. Piece should now be at uh, about 200 degrees, actually. And I'm going to try to, uh, okay, like this. Try to do this now very straight and hope that it all right next time now 300 degrees in the oven and the torch hope that it will now just drop in
so now it worked i opened up the bore a little bit and now it seems to have fallen in after i heated it up with the torch now i'm gonna try to press it so that it gives a good nice tight bond and then we will see afterwards how concentric it is but anyway it will be machined on this side and if it's too off on this side as well and then uh, just give it a nice touch to get rid of the of the colors for example also and uh, yeah that was a little um a little pain in the butt because uh, it was uh, now the fifth time i tried it and now after finally having opened up the bore about 100th it just dropped in like nothing well sometimes you gotta try well sometimes you're lucky just to have the right tool at hand there's there is not much but sufficient space here and uh this will work <laughs> Yeah, as I said, it is just a very, very tiny scratch on the surface that we can touch up later on. But here you can feel nothing. That's uh, how I wanted it to be. Nice. That was the moment of truth. And uh, to see if everything worked fine and if uh, the plate is not pressing against the spindle, you can uh, just slide a piece of paper in there and it shows that there is a gap which is exactly what I wanted without losing not more of Z height than necessary it's about I don't know two to three tenths of a millimeter gap which is totally fine and so I will be able to machine the rest now all right so I had to sacrifice a uh, Morse taper three. Um, don't know what that is. Pushing sleeve whatsoever. Um, seems to be not hardened, but anyway, I will need it to put this thing, the arbor, in the lathe. Okay, I got it mounted in the sleeve with a little bit of a of a draw screw to make sure it really sits tightly in the in the sleeve here and i will be um, supporting it with the tailstock because there is already a center bore and then indicate onto the outer surface of the bore and and see where we are and then do uh, the diameter here that should meet the one of the head Okay, as I don't, well, I own a four jaw, but I haven't yet made a flange here, an adapter yet, and I don't want to go into another side project here. Credits to uh, Inheritage Machining. So, in this direction here, the concentricity is super. The, uh, the sleeve is practically... about below hundredth of a millimeter here in this area which is for this stick out fine and the concentricity is also four I would say for it I, I don't I don't have a um, I don't have call it that that takes up this thing here so this is why we have to live with that little run out and do the final touch up actually on the mill itself we're facing off the remaining stud of the uh, of the 
of the arbor. I'm just taking two pens at a time here because of the stick out. But it is fairly no shatter. I had shatter on the outside diameter, but here now it is relatively stiff. but there stays a small hole. Unfortunately, this, uh, this piece of C45 steel came only in diameter of uh, 100. Now it is 70, so a lot of chips had to be made. Cleaning up will be really fun today. Okay, it seems to fit. If you wiggle it, a bit. It used to go on very beautifully. There you go. Now to the mill. It already looks pretty decent. I'm quite happy how it turned out so far. Let's see how the runout is actually in the spindle of the mill. Okay, this looks like we really need a very, very small touch up only. It's on the outer diameter, it's 200. But that can be done easily with the, with the tool and the vise. Let's do this. And don't keep your dick in the vise, right? So this is it. Looks like set up and the mill is turning away from me towards the tool and I will touch off and just face off the final uh, face. By the way, it can be seen here beautifully how there's a very tiny small gap, which is really good. the trick. This is how it should be, just nothing. So the surface that the head mounts against is now super parallel to the spindle, no run out, and uh, that should give a really good surface when uh, actually facing. There it is. As short as possible, still leaving not crazy Z height on the machine. If I take the table all the way down, ah, well, I think I can work on something in the big vise. I have a smaller one, and if I clamp something to the table directly, which I will do soon, um, should do it. Beautiful. Okay, there's the hole, now five millimeters. I will try to go with uh, six and dream it. Okay, now here we have got the Loctite 648. Hardened pin, six millimeter. The reamed hole here that should have been on the borderline, but uh, somehow it uh, did not make it, I don't know. But nevertheless, it will key the two pieces together. And I will now glue it in place, tap it a little bit, and then I call this project finally done. Well, there you go. Done. And this is what I needed the tool for. That's my housing of my bandsaw, and it will get another motor that has to fit through this hole and I also need to even out these studs here and this can all be done with this Narex. I will now just go a tenth of a millimeter, that's one turn, at least it says it here.
this thing is super awesome. Also, the facing mechanism works really good. Now, uh, through the heater, well, it's aluminium, but it's doing it. This is really a nice tool. Sounds a little bit like a steam engine. 